Good morning. Let's try that again. Good morning. It's great to see everyone here today on this, what is turning out at this moment to be a rainy day. Uh, I'm Penny Garrison, a minister here at Knox Dundas, and we're glad you're here worshiping in person or online. Uh, it is good to come together as God's people. Uh, we are not having coffee today. I just got the word. Um, we, it was going to be made, but uh, it's raining not so good. So we will bring that back next week, hopefully. And the barbecue that's uh, planned for this afternoon, just hang tight, all right? <laughs> Wilma has been down on her knees praying for days. So, um, you know, the power of prayer, right? So we're still optimistic, but again, the weather is just so unpredictable, it seems, these days. So if you are, are signed up to come, um, you know that uh, you will, we will let you know either via an email or a phone call if it's not happening, right? Basically, if you don't hear from us, uh, assume it is happening, but please do check your email our answering machine, because we're hoping that still will happen. If it doesn't happen today, then we're looking at doing it on Tuesday evening from four to eight, or any time within that time that people can come and arrive and be there. So let's just see what, uh, what the day brings. We are uh, doing a patio chats this week, although I, I think I'm gonna now call it side lawn chats. <laughs> we, we ended up not on the patio, but we ended up on a beautiful tree on the side lawn on Wednesday, had a wonderful conversation. And so um, we will uh, are meeting again this Wednesday at 1.30 and you're more than welcome to come. It's very informal, but it is a time to connect and to, to chat together. Um, and so that's at 1.30 to 2.30 on Wednesday on the side lawn, unless, of course, we need to come indoors because it's raining. But uh, let's see. It, right now, it says it's not supposed to be. And then on the 26th of June, two Sundays from today, we are playing another outdoor worship service. Um, all of these outdoor things are, are because, I mean, it's wonderful to be outdoors, but also from a COVID perspective, that's the safer venue, right, if we can be outdoors. So that's why we're trying to do it for kind of for, for both reasons. So we're having a joint worship service picnic and uh, games with uh, St. Mark's folks. It's going to be lots of fun. And again, we'll be, be out in the, in the area and we're invited to bring like your chairs along. Bring some lunch that you want to have for yourself and then we'll be doing the dessert, um, have that. So please re just put that in your calendar at 10, 10 a.m., not 9.30. 10 a.m. on June 26. Now, last week you uh, saw Peg and I in orange. You saw that uh, Gail had her backpack ready to walk, and walk we did. And so uh, maybe if, uh, there we go. We're going to show you our, our team that went down to Bayfront. We had a beautiful day. It was, it was quite wonderful. The, the, the weather was excellent. And there you can see Peg's hair really was much oranger than mine. So, um, but anyway, there, there we are. Um, there's a team again, we've just got two or three pictures. Some people were in and out of, out of them. There's a sort of, they're headed out. I tried to get everybody's attention, but they're just so determined to get walking that they're, they're headed out along this beautiful path. Oh, and we got Nan and, Nan and, G and Gail turned around and gave a little wave. Uh, we got the, we picked up uh, Ella, and so we went together and had a great time. And there we are again. Uh, we're in the month exactly how much we raised, but as you know, we were over 10,000, just fabulous, just incredible. Uh, as far as we know, the, uh, the number one sort of team um, in terms of the financial, but overall picture, we'll, we'll let you know as, as the Wesley is uh, able to get that information. So thank you again to all who organized, uh, particularly Gail, who is uh, really a part of that, and, and others from the other churches. To all who participated, whether you're walking or fi giving financially, thank you so much. Well, let's uh, come now together and uh, hear our, uh, have our call to worship. I will le read the leader part, and you're invited to uh, all of us to respond with all. Come, let us worship the God who came to seek and save the lost. Let us worship the God who came to seek and save each of us. Let us welcome God into our homes and our hearts. Let us give of ourselves in this worship time that we may know God's presence deeply. 
let us joyfully and with gratitude worship God. Let's pray together. Holy God, who is one in three and three in one, we praise you this day as the source of all life, maker of heaven and earth. You created us and called us good, shepherding us with your steadfast love. Jesus Christ, we praise you this day, born into our midst to show us the way of goodness and mercy and grace. Holy Spirit, we praise you this day for the energy you bring to us as we greet each day as, as a gift and serve in the world with gladness. Holy God, three in one, one in three, reveal to us this day what it means to live as your people so that we may honor your holy name now and forever. Almighty God, you have set before us the path, but we have wandered on our own to try to find our own way. Sometimes we're like toddlers, and we hear your call and, and come back. Other times we are children testing boundaries, ignoring your call until fear finally makes us look back. And still other times we are full of youthful rebellion, demanding to cut loose and set free, not knowing how much we still need your wisdom and guidance. But most of all, too often we think we are adults, and have figured it all out and that we know our own way, only to stumble and stray so far. Remind us, parental God, that, that you, we are always your children, that we are never fully growing up in your sight, and that we always have much to learn. Help us to seek you every day, to acknowledge that we need your wisdom and guidance, and help us to return to the path and walk with you in the name of Christ who is our companion on this journey of faith, we pray. Amen. Rich or poor, young or old, saint or sinner, we are all God's children. And God transforms each one of us into the people that we are meant to be. Broken, we are mended. Separated from others, we are made one. Longing to serve, we are sent forth. Thanks be to God. We are forgiven. Amen. Our first uh, song of praise is, O oh Lord, how majestic is your name. And so let's stand together as we sing this wonderful song of praise. seated. I want to uh, read Psalm 8 to you now. It's a great response to this uh, song that we just sang. So let's listen to Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens, and out of the mouths of babes and infants you have found a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have established, 
what are humans that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you've made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You've given them dominion over the works of your hands and you've put all things under their feet, all the sheep and the oxen and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Amen. Well, I want to begin today by showing you a few slides from an experiment, the experiment that I did. Well, actually, I had an assistant. I'll show you who that is there in a second. Uh, Ella should help me do with the experiment. Now, it's mostly for the cuteness factor than anything, but anyway, so she helped me. So just, we'll just, uh, I'm going to just explain, uh, Andy, just a little bit about what, each, what we're seeing. If we can go to the next one, that would be great. Thank you. Okay. So here we have five uh, pennies, and we wanted to see what would happen if we put these five pennies, and they, you can see they look very dirty and tarnished, if we put them into a solution. Would they remain looking the same, or would they change? What do you think? What's your best guess? What's your prediction? I mean, we've got a scientist here in our, among us, so what do you think? <laughs> you think they're going to change? All right. Well, let's see. So, next slide there. Um, I'll show you what we used. Okay, a quarter of a cup of vinegar and a heaping teaspoon, teaspoon of salt. Now, when Ella and I bake, we, oh, I'm always telling her to level off the teaspoon. So she was, it took a little convincing to do a heaping teaspoon. That was the first time we'd done a heaping teaspoon. All right, so we, we use those, and we put them in a, a, a bowl. And there you can see we've got our five pennies. We put them in the bowl, and then we counted to 10, which was also a good math lesson, all right? So we counted to 10, and then look what happened. See what happened? They came out sparkling clean with a fresh start for these new pennies, and you could actually recognize them and see them as the pennies. Now, just if we look at the next slide, you can see the difference, right? Isn't that incredible? Now, you're probably wondering, <laughs> what's this got to do with anything that we're talking about this morning, right? Well, hang in, because it has everything to do with the story that we're looking at today. We're looking at fresh starts and new beginnings. And as you well know, Jesus is a strong giver of fresh starts. He helps us to find ourselves, to begin again, and to enjoy new possibilities and live as changed, uh, a changed person in, in all the good and wonderful ways that was intended for us. Today I want to tell you a story from Luke 19 about a man who got a fresh Brand new start because and through Jesus. And I, I have a feeling you'll recognize it. You know the story. And some of you, well, I know we'll be aging ourselves, but some of you are probably got the song going in your head. You could probably sing it to me. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree and said, Zacchaeus, you come down, for I'm going to your house today, for I'm going to your house today. Now, I used to think it was, so I'm going to your house for tea. <laughs> that's what I, I, I don't know, that's what, that was what was in my mind, but when I Googled it, that's what it said. It was always like, you know, going to your house for tea. Well, as much as we might enjoy that song from our Sunday school days, I trust and pray that today we will kind of move past those wee little interpretations that we might have and instead be moved and challenged by the profound and deep spiritual truths in the story for our, our lives and for the people around us. Well, the story begins by telling us that Jesus uh, visited the city of Jericho, and in the city lived this man named Zacchaeus. And interestingly enough, Zacchaeus, the name means pure or clean. Hmm. It also means God remembers. 
And it's pretty interesting because his name and his actions <laughs> in no way matched each other, at least when Jesus met Zacchaeus. He was anything but pure and clean. However, we will see in the story that, jo- that God definitely remembers Zacchaeus. He was a tax collector, and and he was rich. And the problem was not that he was rich, but it was how he got to be so rich. You see, he collaborated with the corrupt Roman government by paying the required taxes. That would be figured out in advance, and those were already huge amounts in and of themselves. And then he would keep whatever else he could collect above Uh, all of that for himself. And and he would gouge people and take way, way more than he should. In other words, he cheated people. And I mean, it's a problem in and of itself, but it was even made worse by the fact that the people he was taking the money from already did not have a lot of money and they were working really hard just to survive. And because of his actions, Zacchaeus, of course, was not well-liked. In fact, people despised him because of how mean and ruthless he was. Well, one day Zacchaeus got wind that Jesus was coming to Jericho and that he would be passing by his way. Now, for reasons we aren't quite sure about, uh, but we see that that Zacchaeus seemed to be determined, uh, almost desperate to see Jesus. why, Why was this rich and corrupt tax collector so compelled to see Jesus and so much so that that this man who was not tall in stature went and he ran ahead of the cloud and and you know he cast aside his dignity and he climbed up of the sycamore tree to see above the crowds and can you imagine a a, a Roman official and a, and a chief tax collector to boot climbing up a tree just like a, a kid might do well, why did he do it? What do you think? What, what compelled him to do this? Had he looked at himself in the mirror that morning and, and did he not like what he saw? Was he tired of the exclusion that he felt from the community? Was he feeling guilty about the way he treated people so adversely, uh, that he had so adversely affected? Was he struggling deep down with how he was living his life, and was it becoming unbearable? Or was he just plain curious about Jesus, um, and so he just had to see for himself? Well, we, we don't know the answer to the questions, but his actions seem to infer that he had a deep-seated desire and need to see Jesus. And it got me asking myself, you know, myself, like, what, what brings us any of us to want to see Jesus. You know, what, what in our lives draws us towards Jesus and leads us to seek him? Well, in the, in the Gospel of Luke, seeing, the word seeing uh, Jesus is seeing God's salvation. That's how Luke writes it. And there's a, a Presbyterian a pastor by the name of Patrick Wilson, and he writes this. He says, This is what Zacchaeus wants to see. Jesus is salvation walking. And Jesus enters Jericho. And Zacchaeus climbs the sycamore in order to see. This is no idle curiosity or celebrity stargazing. Zacchaeus does not seek an autograph. Zacchaeus longs to see something that is not easily spoken. And this... uh, Longing is deep and aching. And the language of trying to see is phrased in terms of seeking and searching and yearning. We may, we may wonder at times what Jesus looked like, but Zacchaeus wants to see more than a face. He wants to see more than he can say, but he knows at least this much. It has to do with Jesus entering Jericho. Unquote. Well, the story, story shifts at this point.